Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Main Just caught a touchdown from the Bay Guys, last week the FBI announced the indictments of 13 people accused in a drug ring over the past four years. Now we know during that investigation, police also uncovered alleged allegations that those members were allegedly involved in murder for hire hit. What you're about to see may be considered disturbing. That epicenter is in Ohio where officials say they are on track for 10,000 overdose deaths this year. That is higher than the total for the entire nation in 1990. They blame a drug so powerful you could die just touching it. In what local officials say is the overdose capital of America, Montgomery County Sheriff Phil Plummer finds an unprecedented crisis on his hands. Brought on by the synthetic opioid fentanyl, up to thousands of times stronger than heroin. It's used legally in chronic pain management, but now manufactured, trafficked, and sold illegally as a street drug. In May, drug. the county almost passed last year's total number of deaths. And officials estimate this year's total will be double In the that. back seat, a four-year-old boy in a dinosaur shirt. It's the picture of innocence. In the front, his mother, Rhonda Pasick, and driver, James Accord. I was on my way into work in my personal vehicle when I uh, started following a, a dark-colored Ford Explorer that was driving, for the most part, erratic. East Liverpool patrolman Kevin Thompson wasn't even on duty yet when he encountered the vehicle on St. Clair Avenue near Prospect Street. It's one of those things, I mean, you're a police officer 24 hours a day, you know, even, you know, in your personal vehicle when you're, when you're, you're traveling to and from work. Here's where the story takes a frightening turn as the officer followed the vehicle down this hill. A school bus was directly in their path, letting kids off for the day. Thankfully, the suspect hit the brakes and skidded to a stop, avoiding any collision with the bus or students. Minutes, you know, could have meant the difference between, you know, how it, how it played out to what could have happened. You know, somebody could have been killed, seriously injured. Thompson approached the vehicle to find Pasek slumped over in the passenger seat and her son in the back. He took the keys out of the ignition when Accord tried to drive away, but it wasn't long before he too lost consciousness. Yeah, I saw like three or four police cruisers and there was two ambulances. Mike Stoffel lives nearby. He saw the commotion as responders revived the pair with naloxone and police officers comforted the child. Yeah, more than a dozen people are behind bars charged with one of the largest drug busts in Cincinnati history. Trevor Peters joins us with more on the investigation and the ongoing search for one of the suspects. Trevor? Guys, this just coming in from the new federal prosecutor here in the Southern District of Ohio. Over the last four years, prosecutors say 14 people trafficked heroin and fentanyl in the greater Cincinnati area. And according to prosecutors, the group would get the drugs from multiple places, including Atlanta and Baltimore. Stephen Robertson, also known as Worm, was in charge. Prosecutors say his brother, Anthony, also known as Chemist, would manufacture the mixtures and put more and to make them more potent. Police took about uh, $150,000 in cash, 10 kilograms of fentanyl, multiple vehicles, and 28 guns as part of the investigation. They are also accused of distributing in Akron, Fairfield, and Gary, Indiana. Now, prosecutors are still looking for one of the alleged suspects. You see him on your screen here. This is 36-year-old Sterling Parish of Cincinnati. If you know where he is, they're at the federal police. investigation into one of the largest Cincinnati's drug trafficking organizations also may have uncovered an even larger crime spree. Trevor Peters is at the alert desk with the new details you will see first here on Fox 19 now. Guys, last week the FBI announced the indictments of 13 people accused in a drug ring over the past four years. Now we know during that investigation, police also uncovered alleged allegations that those members were allegedly involved in murder for hire hits. Prosecutors say Stefan Roberson and his older brother Anthony led the drug ring. But according to federal prosecutors, 
multiple sources have told investigators the ring was also involved in successful murder for hire hits and some are still quote active and ongoing court records tie kevin suttles to the drug ring after he was seen fleeing the home of one of the robersons prosecutors say suttles was executed on january 5th now yesterday marks since his first homicide of 2021 but police have made an arrest in the case already. They say Kevin Suttles died after being shot on Brookcrest Drive in Roselawn. Another person possibly connected with the shooting was taken to the hospital. Police have charged 28-year-old Jamin Atkins with murder. Activists concerned about the violence spreading in our community, just like the coronavirus. We're going through something, and it's not just a pandemic, a death of virus, uh, this pandemic is killing off our children. This homicide comes after the city's deadliest shooting year to date. 2020 ended with at least 90 homicides and at least 484 shooting deaths by gunfire up 20. Police say Jamon Akins shot Suttles nine times while at a Roselawn barber shop. Akins was then shot by an unnamed person but survived. A spokeswoman for the prosecutor's office says they know who it is but no charges will be filed because it appeared to be in self-defense. Akins is currently in the Hamilton County Justice Center on a $1 million bond. Yo, yo, we back. It's Shades Pop a lot. Mob, gang, we on our way to Ohio with it. Y'all meet us in the Blue Chip City or the city with seven hills. The Natty. I'm going to need all my people from Cincinnati to get in the comment box. I can't remember if we've been here before. But y'all let me know if we have. If not, let us know who we need to come for. Now, today, we are going to be covering a set of brothers by the name of Stefan and Anthony Robeson. Collectively, they would be known as Worm and Chemist. And they would go on to run the largest opioid trafficking rink Cincinnati has ever seen. And not that that was enough. According to the federal government, they would also be responsible for several murder for hire slides. Now, being that we don't get to Cincinnati that much, I'm going to try to go through the motions to explain the city. So just on the outside looking in, Cincinnati looks like a pretty balanced city as far as racial population. As statistics would show in 2019, the city was 50.7% white and 42.3% black, as well as 3.8% Hispanic and 2.2% Asian. But diving into the history of the city, it has not always been that way. Because when we go back to the 1950s, Cincinnati was a predominantly white city with 84.4% of the population being white and only 15.5% of it being black. And it would grow drastically, it seemed like, during the course of the decades. So by the 1970s, you would begin to see a decline in the white population as the percentage of whites in the city would drop to 71.9 and the number of African-Americans would increase to 27.6. Moving on to the 90s, where it would drop again as far as the white population of 60.5 while seeing the population of African-Americans growing to 37.9, then by the year of 2000, it would essentially be a mixed city with the white population being 53%, with the population for black people shooting up to 42.9%. Now, I'm not quite sure what was the cause of this drastic change. It could have possibly been white flight or something behind the scenes that I don't know about. But to say that Cincinnati has come a long way since 1950 is an understatement. Now, for those of you guys that have been under a rock, America is in a severe opioid crisis with every state seeing more overdoses than they ever have. And just digging slightly deeper, I did take a look at the CDC's website or the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. And I would go on to see that nearly a million people have died from overdoses since the year of 1999, which was slightly over 900,000. 
But what is even more alarming than that even is that more than 109,000 people have died of drug overdoses in the 12 month period that ended in March of 2002. And I'm not quite sure where I heard this or how true it even is, but I did hear that this might possibly be the year where we surpass more than 100,000 overdose deaths in one year. So to say that America is fighting a severe problem is an understatement. And in only a few other states is this a bigger issue than in the state of Ohio. And if I was forced to pick another state, I would probably say West Virginia. So that leads us to the story of the Roberson brothers, Stephen and Anthony, or Worm and Chemist, as the government said that they also went by. Now, in an affidavit filed in support of a criminal complaint against the brothers, it would go on to say that Stephen would be running one of the largest heroin and fentanyl drug trafficking organizations in the greater Cincinnati area. Now, the drug trafficking organization is also alleged to have distributed narcotics in Akron, Ohio, Fairfield, Ohio, as well as Gary, Indiana. The authorities would go on further to say that Worm's older brother, Chemist, would be responsible for manufacturing the heroin and fentanyl mixtures for the drug trafficking organization by cutting the narcotics with fillers and looking for different ways to make the drug mixture as potent as possible. Now, this mob ties. I know y'all know something about that dog food. Sound like they was trying to drop bodies with that shit. According to authorities, they're going to say that the drug trafficking organization was up and running for quite some time. And more than 30 state and federal search warrants have been executed since 2018 on co-conspirators residences where large quantities of fentanyl and loaded firearms were routinely recovered. Now, if facing a life max and a 10-year minimum ain't enough, they would also go on to say that the drug trafficking organization was responsible for several successful murder-for-hire hits. Now, they did not go into much detail about that, only saying that a person associated with the drug trafficking organization by the name of Kevin Suttles would end up being somewhat ambushed or executed by a guy by the name of Jamon Akins. Now, we're not quite sure if the authorities believe the Robeson brothers are responsible for that murder. But looking at the names of the 14 people indicted, I didn't see the murder victim Kevin Suttles or the murder suspect Jamon Akins listed as one of the 14 people indicted. Now, just listening to the details of the case in the current state of Ohio, to be honest, and my idea doesn't look really good for the brothers with being painted as the faces of one of the largest drug trafficking organizations out of one of the biggest cities in the state that has probably the biggest issue in the nation. That should just sound crucial. But y'all know what it is with me. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And y'all flood the comment box below, man. Let me know where we need to go, what stories we missed, what we got wrong, who we need to 